From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Did you see this story? If you didn't, you're going to hear all about it right now. Joining us on the line, Janella Spears. She is in Sweet Home, Oregon. Janella, thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. Um, are you surprised that you are the subject of a national story? Yes, I really am surprised I'm the subject of a national story since I live in a town that's only 8,700 people. How did the Associated Press and Fox News and others find out about you? Well, the way they found out about me is that I reported it to the police department that uh, because I talked to uh, the FBI, the FBI told me that I needed to report it to the local police department. I reported uh, a scam that I that I was a victim of a scam, and they didn't do a thing for me. I reported it over two years ago. They didn't do a thing for me, so uh, I continued on trying to quote unquote fix it myself. And after I tried fixing it myself, then um, I think it was just a fluke that the criminal investigator in Salem named Bill Gray was uh, looking at the um, um, how many people have sent money to Nigeria, and he noticed that my name was on there, that I had sent about $140,000 to Nigeria in the past uh, six months or something like that. And so he thought that I might be doing money laundering or uh, something illegal. So they decided to do a uh, bust into my house, you might say. And the funny part of it was that I was ready to go to work. I get into the car at 6.30, and then the police decide to follow me two blocks down the road, and then they put their little siren lights on. And I said, now, I, listen, I'm not speeding, just going two blocks. <laughs> yeah. I did not go past the sign, you know, I did not go through a stop sign. I stopped at the stop sign. What is this? You know, and then they turned around and they told me I had to go back home. Now, why were they sitting out there at unmarked cars? I don't know. But they were sitting out there at unmarked cars watching me leave the house and then turned around and told me I had to go back home. And then they did a complete search of my house looking to see if I had any money and uh, that was hidden someplace in a strong box. Uh, the one thing he did do is that the strong box I did have of my dad's uh, death papers, I couldn't get into because I lost the key, so he's able to actually open up the key, and he wanted to, he really wanted to open it up just to, to see if there was any money hidden inside of it, and I told him that all it was was my dad's death certificate stuff. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, for people who haven't seen this story, and of course I've read it, and uh, other people I know have read it, let's go back to the beginning here. Sure. Uh, you said $140,000 to Nigeria. Why? 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 <laughs> Well, uh, I know. This, the question is, is that the people who have told me uh, that I, when I looked at an email that was written back in August of 2005 said that I had a dead relative that uh, got killed in a car accident and over in Nigeria, and he had a son named Charles Spears, and this particular... Do you have relatives in Nigeria? Well, I didn't think I did. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm very white, and I, so I said I didn't think I did because I didn't think I had anybody black in my in my. Uh, so you've never been to Africa? No, I have never been to Africa. And, but and you, thing, and to your knowledge, you have no relatives in Nigeria, and well, you received not that any, I know of. Not that you know of, <laughs> <laughs> and not that you would have reason to believe you do either, right? Well, no. I, the thing that did give me reason to believe it is because there, I did more research because uh, I've done genealogy myself. And uh, the genealogy research that I did is in the library, etc. And my husband's father, again, Spears is my husband's name, needless to say, because I'm married to a Spears. But uh, my husband's father died before he was born. And, but we did meet the grandmother, and the grandmother was the one who was married to Otto Spears. And she divorced him because he was a woman womanizer and was always traveling and always going places that he shouldn't have gone 
But the thing that matched was the um, two things that matched over the thing is that I looked at the census in the 1920 census. And the 1920 census had him disappearing from America. He didn't die. Nothing happened to him. He just totally wasn't on the census anymore. And so God only knows where he went. He could have gone to Nigeria. Who knows? But the thing that was matching is that I had a different person, not the guy who sent me this, the uh, email, but a different person doing uh, genealogy research in, over in Africa in the library, and he sent me pictures of the uh, Charles Spears uh, income and what kind of work he did and the income and the kind of work he did matched exactly to what my husband's uh, father's in, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, do, do, um, the work that he did. He was a tool and die maker and he was a tool and die inventor. And so anybody who's invented uh, tool and die is going to be uh, into some inheritance money. My husband was into inheritance money from his father when he died, and he did inherit just a little bit. wasn't enough wasn't a lot, but it was enough just to get him through into some college. Um, but the rest of the family, there's six in the family. The rest of the family is kind of upset because they didn't get any inheritance money. So my goal was to try and get the inheritance money that was supposed to be, quote, unquote, out there for my family, share it with the family. Did you ever think to hire an attorney to research this for you? I did. Of course, the attorneys that I hired, I had hired actually two different attorneys. And the attorneys were over there in Africa because it didn't do any good to hire an attorney over here. And I do have an attorney over here uh, that has helped me as well. But wait a minute. Um, Before you sent money... Wouldn't it have made sense to have an attorney suss this out? I talked to the the bank. What I did is I talked to the bank uh, director who uh, read the emails here in Sweet Home. And the bank director said if it's true, then they would send it to me uh, without having to do upfront money. All Uh, right, so there you go. And, And you had not heard about the millions, if not hundreds of millions of these emails that people receive every day. I mean, they make fun of them on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, they've they, been doing it for years. I mean, yeah. we make fun of them on the air all the time. I I came on the air one day and announced that I was going to Nigeria because I'd received a letter from a foreign minister in Nigeria. Uh, told me they wanted to deposit $127 million in my bank account. And uh, when I said that, I was surprised at the number of people who called up and begged me not to go. Of course, they had no intention of going. <laughs> it just didn't seem believable in any way, shape, or form. Right. And I'm just curious about how this could seem believable that you would have to send money. Uh, have you ever been through probate before? Have you ever sat through the reading of a will? Have you ever had any relatives leave you money? Nobody ever asked you for money in order to get the money, did they? No, I've never actually inherited enough that I would have to go through probate. I'm just a normal middle middle class family member. I guess what's interesting about this story and and this is what fascinates me is you they they took you through this entire it's called the Nigerian scam and it's been written about Dateline NBC uh uh did a big piece on it where uh they sent uh a reporter to London to meet with the people who sent these emails out with hidden cameras and what have you. So it's been pretty well known for a while that this is a scam. What's interesting about this is by all accounts, and certainly by talking to you on the phone, um, you are an educated, intelligent individual, uh, because one would expect that someone would fall for a scam like this. Oh, what a maroon. I, I'm just curious about, all right, you sent, it started with $100, and, right. and then you, then they told you you send more money. I mean, how did it get from 100 to 140000 <laughs> Well, that, that's it. Just goes slow. Let's put it this way. And uh, shoot, I, if I was to say that I was going to send that much money, I'd say no to anybody that says well, you got to send me one hundred and forty thousand uh, dollars. I would never ever agree to it. The funny part of it is, it just goes slow. They say, okay, we just need a hundred dollars here. We need fifty dollars there. We need uh, two hundred dollars there, and it just adds up. And that's why, actually, I was kind of surprised when. Well, one hundred and forty thousand dollars would be uh, what 
1,400 calls asking for $100 a call. I mean, that's a lot of phone calls. Yeah, you're right. And my, my phone bill's not the easiest either. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, I, what I'm curious about is why didn't you draw the line somewhere and say, you know what? <laughs> All right, I sent in 100, I sent in 500, I sent in 1,000. Uh, nothing's happening. Right. Well, the reason why, there's a whole bunch of reasons why that the uh, line wasn't drawn, because number one, they kept giving me, like, going around in circles. They say, we're going to give you to somebody else that's going to get it fixed, and uh, because I believe the person that was going to get it fixed, the other thing is, say, okay, we've, we're sending the, the person over to give you the money in person, uh, the person's on the train, the person's in the plane, the person's stuck at, at customs, the person's stuck in the, at the train department, uh, please send us money to help the person get here, uh, the, the, uh, customs tag is, uh, the person's stuck in customs, and so I call customs to try and verify customs, is there somebody here waiting for me, is there somebody here that you have arrested, because he none said of they this, wait a minute, somebody. none of this is believable, I mean, how you're telling it to me, and I know you believed it. Yeah, I did. But I it's not it. believable. Yeah, I did believe it, because, and I don't know, it's, I just kind of have been the type of person that I believe something until it's proven wrong. And then, of course, how long do you have to go until it's actually proven wrong? That's the question, <laughs> you know. I See, I'm the kind of person who doesn't believe something until it's proven right. Yeah, and there's a lot of people who are that way. And um, I, I don't know. I just was brought up with my family. My, my uh, grandfather was... Um, my hus my grandfather was a Baptist minister, and uh, my dad was a Bap needless to say, PK kid. And we were supposed to always tell tell the truth. And if we didn't tell the truth, you know, uh, we were punished greatly for lying. But what made you think the rest of us got that same lecture? <laughs> Well, because mainly, I guess, because I lived a sheltered life. I was an only child, and I never uh, got into... People never offered me uh, drugs. People never offered me... I never got into any trouble at all. Um, people never offered me any... T t even to get into trouble. But that, that's, say. of course, because you live in Sweet Home, Oregon. Right, there's just very little... Uh, well, I grew up... I was born in Denver, Colorado, but I brought was uh, brought out of Colorado with my parents back in 1954 to call to uh, Riverside, California. But then I moved to Sweet Home, Oregon and kept in the, uh, uh, my mother called it the backwoods. She called it very backwoodsy over here. <laughs> yeah. So um, kind of, you know, I just kept out of trouble and uh, never got into anybody who got into trouble. So I just, uh, like I said, went all the way through college. Nobody... Um, offered me any bad problems. Let's I've, let's review some of this here because I'm looking at the story and I want people to hear what, what you believed here. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, for those of you just tuning in, uh, we are talking to uh, Janella Spears of Sweet Home, Oregon. Uh, she fell for the Nigerian scam you've heard so much about and uh, she lost, was it $130,000? Is that how much it was? No, actually all total is close to $400,000. $400,000? Yeah. Now, um, it says here that the people you talked to said that President Bush and FBI Director Robert Mueller, which is not even his real name, that's not the correct spelling, were in on the deal and they needed your help. Uh, it says here, when you began to doubt the scam, you got letters from the president of Nigeria, from FBI Director Robert Mueller, and from President Bush. Do you, you really believed you had a letter from President Bush? Well, let me tell you, my mother wrote President Bush's uh, wife uh, several times and got plenty of letters, official letters back from her, and I've seen them. My mother said that uh, <laughs> she would always write the wife because the wife talks to the husband in bed. <laughs> so, so, since my mother had written President Bush several times, uh, I didn't think it was that unlikely that I could have gotten something regarding President Bush and, and uh, the sen Senate. And again, I had pictures of. You didn't the think Nigerian. that President Bush would arrange a phone call or would arrange for some emissary to meet with you? Because it says here that you were told by President Bush, that terrorists could get the money if you did not help. Right. They were talking about um, that, some of the emails that I got. 
But you you wouldn't think that these were emails. But you wouldn't expect that the FBI, the Secret Service, or an emissary of the White House would, would uh, arrive at your front door with concerns about this. No, and that's why I was kind of surprised to see a police, uh, the police department try and arrive at my front door with mm -hmm. concerns about it. Because, <laughs> you know, I I had reported it to everybody. I had reported it to uh, the FBI. I reported it to... The, they also have, like, a cyberspace uh, place where you can report the Nigerian scams uh, on the Internet. Yes. And uh, it's like C... Uh, CSI, something like that, that you report when you get scammed, and then you're supposed to go ahead and you, they give I think you it's the numbers. FTC. I think, I think it's the Federal Trade Commission that has that site. Right. And so I reported it there. I reported it everywhere and that uh, I was having problems and having the scam and uh, asking if I was trying to verify some of these emails. And that is another thing that kept me going is because... When I try to verify, is this a true email address, the FBI people, um, Nancy Savage is the one down in Eugene, Oregon, and she, uh, t I went into her office on my own, and I t uh, reported it, and she said, well, mainly you just have lost your money, you might as well forget it, and, uh, you know, it, I said, well, why can't you help me? Well, you know, it's out of our jurisdiction. Well, I, my mother was a fighter, let's put it this way. My mother wrote President Bush's wife and every other congressman that you might think of. And so she was always fighting for her rights and always fighting to try and get things solved and settled. So that's another reason why I never gave up on it, because I was also trying to fight and get things solved and settled and get refunds back or get some restitution. Now, I did get letters saying that some people were arrested, and I did get letters saying that some people were put in jail, but um, I had uh, one guy over in London that uh, got caught for trying to, to hide things from me. I got uh, another guy in France that uh, and was And you, you, you knew all this and continued uh, sending money? Well, I, yeah, because like I said, everybody was saying that they were going to give me restitution. And they said, oh, I have to have, um, you have to send me $600 and I'll give you a PIN number. You have to send me uh, $1,000 and I'll and, give you... And you gave your PIN number? No, a PIN number, they, <laughs> they're giving me a, uh, a ATM card. And then they said, well, we're giving the ATM card, but now you got to earn the PIN number. Or so you had to me... buy the PIN number. Yeah, then I have to buy the PIN number. Could could I ask you to hold on a moment while we take a break here? Because sure. I I, I want to find out more about this. Our guest, Janella Spears, uh, she fell for the Nigerian scam. And wait until you hear uh, where she got all the money to send over there. Four hundred thousand dollars all told. Coming up, Tom Likes one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Tom Likes one eight hundred five eight hundred eight. Six, six, the Tom Likas Show. Yes. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5-800-TOM. And we are joined in this segment of our program by Janella Spears of Sweet Home, Oregon. She lost over $400,000 to the Nigerian email scam we've heard so much about. Now, uh, Janella, I'm looking at the story here. This is where I'm getting all my information. And uh, it says here that uh, the $400,000 came from, well, you you wiped out your husband's retirement account. You mortgaged your house, which was already paid for. And you, you took out a lien on the family car, which was also paid for. Is that right? Uh, no, not 100% right. Uh, the... Uh thing that I uh, use my husband's retirement, that's not true because I'm living on my husband's retirement. I mainly destroyed his dreams of retirement. <laughs> I see. Because uh, he wanted to do some cruises and he wanted to go here, there, and everywhere and have some fun. And he's upset with me because now he can't do that. So well, Was uh, he in I, on this? Uh, did he know you were doing this? Uh, yeah. Uh, I told him he didn't agree with uh, a lot of it. Some of it he did agree with um, because I explained to him, I'm one of these open and honest people, and I 
never keep anything away from anybody. So that's probably one reason why I'm so easily scammed, because I'm so op- open and honest. But anyway, uh, I told him what uh, these people said, and I told them what, uh, and showed them the documentation of what they were showing us. And again, we went to the banks. I did make a lot of phone calls to find out if it was true or not true, tried to find out. Uh, Who did you call? Oh, shoot. I, I called, I've called many banks. I've called the uh, customs department when they said the people were uh, stuck in the customs department. I called the Wait, airport. did you get the number of the customs department from them? No, I, I they did give me the the customs department number. They had a Was it actually department. the customs department or was it uh, their own phone? Well, they both. Uh mm-hmm. I found they gave me the customs department quote unquote in Nigeria and that was one that they gave me the phone number for. And then uh lo and behold at Christmas time uh, it was quote unquote closed, and then when I tried to call back after Christmas, they said that it was a bogus telephone number. Uh, so I personally uh, looked up the customs department phone number on the internet and also the uh, yellow pages, you might say, and tried to call customs. I mean, it tell you, it's uh, run around to try and get in touch with anybody in customs. Did you ever to- try, like, the Department of Homeland Security, for example? Yeah. No, I didn't try the Department of Homeland Security. Didn't know anything about it. That, that's the other problem is I didn't really have anybody guiding me through this. Yeah, I mean, when they talk about terrorists, wouldn't you think the Department of Homeland Security might might be involved in that? Well, no, nobody was. T- <laughs> the police department was the one just recently, back in April, was the one who talked about terrorists, but nobody else t- talked about terrorism. They were just talking about the 409 scam. You walked in and told your husband, hey, look at this, I got a letter from President Bush. <laughs> well, he was interested. <laughs> he believed it. Uh, because, you know, when it's, I've had several, even from Mueller, some of them are uh, signed uh, with a handwritten signature, some are not. But the ones with a, with a picture of President Bush and the Nigerian uh, president uh, walking hand in hand, you might say, over in Nigeria, uh, where they showed this, uh, he's, and they gave me his, I, they gave me the president of Nigeria's ID. I also was uh, talking to the senator, Senator David Mark in Nigeria, and uh, he gave me his ID, and then I looked it up on the internet for verification. So I tried to do a lot of verifications myself to see if it was true. And what did the senator from Nigeria tell you? Well, again, the senator from Nigeria says we're going to make it right for you, and again, he wanted me to send him our upfront money. So you never actually talked to a senator from Nigeria, did you? Well, on the phone, according to him, it was, I mean, God only knows. He gave me, I got the picture, and like I said, I well, got Well, where did you uh, get the, the phone ID. number from? But, well, yeah, just like I wouldn't know you on the street if I met you, because I it's all by phone, so, you know, to well, verify. Let me, get, let me give you an example. I'm I'm a public figure. Right. I'm, the only reason I'm calling you is because I saw your name on the newspaper, but I would have no reason to call you otherwise and ask you to send me money. If somebody ever called someone's home and said, uh, 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 hi, this is Tom Likas, I have a radio program, I need you to send me some money, I hope they would never do it because uh, I would never do that. Well, I know, and that's just the whole point. In, in America, I would a senator say, that. send money. Yeah, in America we don't do that. But like you said, I've been told it thousands of times. Well, this is a different country, and we we do it this way in our country. That you bribe public officials. <laughs> the public officials, the one who said that uh, this is what the bank is requiring that you have to send such and such money in order to get the money transferred into your account. But what I'm saying is, how did you know you were talking for to a senator from Nigeria? Well, again, he, uh, I got the ID sent over plus the... Uh, By the people who were scamming you. But did you ever get it? Did you ever get a phone number for the Nigerian Senate yes. from in- independent sources? From independent sources? I tried getting it off the Internet, but everything, of course, with the senator is usually uh, pretty confidential. and It's hard to get it off the Internet. Because phone, the they phone hide- number for the, for, the, for the government is confidential? Yeah, I've tried, uh, like I said, to try, you try and look up President Bush's telephone number on the Internet. Well, actually, uh, I can do that right now while I'm sitting here with you. <laughs> Cause you want get, the phone number? To get a I'm typing line, it in right now. 
Uh, the phone off, number for the White House is 202-466-1111. Okay, now you, you try and find Senator David Mark over in well, Nigeria. Well, first of all, we don't know that there is such a senator in Nigeria. Uh, well, according to, there is, because according to the Internet, after I got the uh, got on the Internet to find out whether or not it was true, uh, and it showed me his uh, college degree and everything, and then a little bit later uh, it said that he was one of the biggest scammers that's around. So... It was more than two months later that they announced that this Senator David Mark was scamming and not to trust him. So, you know, of course, by that time I had already been scammed, so it was too late. Wow. I have to take a break. Can I ask you to hold on one more time? We have we have so many people who want to ask you a question, and oh, some sure. people who've been scammed themselves. Sure. All, all right, hang on a second. We'll continue. We are talking with Janella Spears of Sweet Home, Oregon. Uh, she sent over four hundred thousand dollars to scammers in Nigeria. Your call's coming up next. Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. And we are talking here with Janella Spears of Sweet Home, Oregon. She lost over $400,000 in that Nigerian scam. By the way, Janelle, uh, Senator David Mark, I did a little research uh, during the break here. And there's a number of websites. Uh, these are fraud uh, websites uh, named Senator David Mark as uh, being one of the fraudulent names. Right. Also says here that uh, uh, the telephone numbers that he uses in his letters are all prepaid cellular telephones from Nigeria. That uh, it doesn't even indicate that he's a real person. Yeah, that's why I said when I first when I first visited the website, uh, I did not have anything uh, that that showed any type of uh, derogative things against Senator David Mark. And then we talked for uh, about uh, two months, and then I uh, visited the website again later, and then there was the derogative stuff against him, uh, saying that he was a scammer. Let's take some calls here at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is pre on the Tom Likas show for our guest Janella Spears. Hello. Hello. Hey Tom, thanks for taking my call. Sure. Uh, I have a similar situation. It's uh, my dad. Actually, he went far as going to Zimbabwe uh, to you know where that area that Oprah built a um, new school. That area uh, regarding somebody asked them to uh, uh, you know the. Upfront, uh, $200,000 to release, I believe, like $15 million, and they'll split it, uh, similar to that sort of, uh, uh, situation. Uh, and, uh, he wasn't, uh, going to upfront $200,000, but he went down there to investigate the whole situation, come to, found out, and it was uh, nothing but a big, uh, bogus, and they opened, they went far as, uh, Opening the money, I let them see it, touch it, and all that nonsense. But they didn't, uh, you know, the he didn't give them the money to release the rest of the money because they say if you could release fifteen million dollars, why don't you take the two hundred thousand out of that money? You know. Well, of course that makes sense. Now, uh, didn't you try to stop your dad from going to Zimbabwe? Oh, numerous times, numerous times. Me, my sister, everybody told him this is a big scam and. You know, the, in, if it's too good to be true, it is most likely it's going to be a uh, bogus. You know, it's just uh, he is a compulsive gambler, and uh, you know, he this is not the first time he make uh, uh, dumb decisions. And you know, a lot of people he he's a <laughs> character. You know. Wow! Thank you for the call, Julian. I'm, I'm sorry, that's a Graham. He's in Julian, California, on the Tom Likas show for our guest Janella Spears. Hello. Hi, Tom. Uh, you know, I, I don't really have a question for Janella. I just wanted to make a comment and listening to this. I had read about uh, what was going on with her in the news, and I was somewhat amazed. And I think I got my first Nigerian scam letter in the mail about 10 years ago. 
and they continue to come. And one of the things that's baffled me is that even though these things have become such common knowledge and they're, they are so prevalent, I could never understand how they continue to, to happen and how these people can continue to find it profitable to do these scams. But I think I now understand. It only takes, like, one person like Janella in maybe 50,000 or 100,000 people. There, there might be one person who is as gullible and as stupid as this to make it worth their while. So essentially... It perpetuates, it keeps on happening because of people like her. And I don't know if there's any, uh, any solution to it, but it's just uh, now I understand why they keep happening. It's because of people like this. All right, Graham, thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Uh, this is Rita on the Tom Likas Show for our guest, Janella Spears. Hello. Hi. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Sure. I agree with the last caller. He said most of what I wanted to say. It's just amazing how people can be. He used a very nice word, gullible. I would just say stupid. This has been going around for so many years. NBC News just had a huge um, investigation on this, and I can't remember the reporter's name that did go down and met with the guy. And It just amazes me how people that can have that type of money in this economy sitting in a bank have no brains to get caught up in something like this. It's just amazing. And I tend to think that maybe the people that are saying they are sending all this money over there are the scammers and the ones lying to get people to feel sorry for them or maybe get attention drawn to themselves. You're not a scammer, are you, Janella? No, I'm definitely not a scammer. And actually, the police wanted to find that out, too. That's one reason why they came and investigated my house and took my computer and took my cell phone to find out whether I was a scammer and whether I was uh, laundering money. And, no, I'm actually the victim. But, you know, the the things, uh, I wasn't sitting there with $400,000 in the bank. I, I did not have that to begin with. And to, to say that... Uh, I was squelching my money just to see what I can do. Uh, that's not the way it happened at all. It, it just uh, me got uh, me a little bit here and a little bit there, and it uh, voila, it added up to four hundred thousand. I didn't expect it ever. If I was to sit there three years ago and and say that I had four hundred thousand dollars to to give out to a scam, that was not exactly that would be a totally impossibility. Uh, the whole thing in my mind was to get the money to share with my family and also share with the poor. Uh, people have uh, accused me of being uh, greedy and wanting to have money, and no, it has not any, anything to do with me being greedy and wanting to have the money for myself. I was, uh, I'm a reverend and I'm also a Christian, and I wanted to share with the poor. Uh, I've been a nurse and also wanted to share medical uh I've been always wanted to be a goal in my life was to be a missionary nurse, and uh, this is one of the things that I had in the back of my mind ever since I was eight years old to be a missionary nurse. And so uh, Africa was one of the places that uh, is uh, covered with AIDS and covered with HIV, covered with a lot of uh, illnesses, and uh, I have uh, I wanted to try and help them out. Uh, so actually, in the back of my mind was being more helpful, not to be gullible. And uh, if I did lose all of that money over to Africa, I'm hoping that the money that is going for uh, that, not for, um, you know, drug money, not for um, people getting rich in their condos. Uh, you know, well, my idea of what money should be used for is totally different than what they're probably using it for. But in my mind, that is what I was hoping it to be used for, and I was hoping it would be used wisely. I've talked to different missionaries over there in Africa, uh, I've talked to pastors over in Africa, different churches over in Africa, and also trying to get uh, uh, medications over the counter uh, over to Africa to try and help the sick. And these are the things that I had in the back of my mind. It had nothing to do with me ever trying to be a, a scammer to them. I mean, that's totally ridiculous. I haven't got a penny from them yet. Makes sense to me. Uh, thank you very much for the call. Our guest, Janella Spears at Sweet Home, Oregon, lost $400,000 to the Nigerian email scam. More of your telephone calls for Janella are coming up. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. The Tom Likas Show. It's 
the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We are here with Janella Spears of Sweet Home, Oregon. She was scammed out of $400,000 in the famous Nigerian email scam. Let's say hello to Dre on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Dre. Are you there? Yeah. Say hello. What's going on, Tom? Not much, Dre. Oh, nothing much. Hey, I got two things to say. The first thing I wanted to say is, uh, hey, Janelle, I got some oceanfront property in Idaho I want to sell you. <laughs> <laughs> I know and, uh, Idaho really well. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I've got and, a bridge uh, that goes to Brooklyn, though. I know that, too, and you want to sell me a bridge, too. And that Probably yeah. if you give it to me for $1, I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the second thing, you know, I was listening. She said she was a pastor. Am I, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Now, she said she was a pastor, and she also said she wasn't a scammer. Now, all the pastors that I've ran into, they pretty much scam artists. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if anybody else understands what I'm saying, but... I mean, they they get you to put all this money into to ties, and I mean, you know, in the Bible it say pay ties ten percent or whatever, but then they try to get you to pay more. They try to get the little housing costs and all this other stuff, you know, and then they be driving like BMWs and Mercedes and Aston Martins and Porsches, you know what I mean? So I know you ain't making all of that off the congregation money. So well, I mean, you know what I'm saying? So if you can explain that, I listen to the call off the air. But thanks a lot, Tom. Thank you for the call, Dre. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Dorothy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Tom. Um, I just had to. I was. I just turned on the radio. I just got out of work. I wanted to talk about the scams because I work at Walmart, and at Walmart we have MoneyGram, and there's so many elderly people that are getting scammed right now. The hottest spots are Nigeria, Canada, and Europe. And um, what they do is they say you've won a lottery, and you have to pay um, so much money before they can give you the lottery. So they're real sneaky about it because when you send money, Graham, if you send $900 cash, then you're fine. After you send $900, you have to have um, you have to show an ID. Now anything over $900 to pick it up, you have to have two forms of ID. But what they do is that they have these elderly people sending like $2,900 because after September 11th, they have the new, um, the new money laundering laws and they make it real more difficult. And if you send $3,000 and more, we have a paper act book and we have to log in, um, your social security, your address, your social security number and your ID. But what they're doing to these elderly people is they're they're finding them, the gullible ones, and they're they're telling them lies. Um, one, for instance, is this elderly lady came in last month, and she said that um, she was sending money to Canada, and she was sending right underneath $2,899. So right there, that's a red flag for us. So we, we kind of question her without her getting suspicious or getting, um, like, scaring her off, you know, without being too nosy. And we tell her, oh, who are you sending the money to and this and that. Well, they like to talk. So they'll start telling us, oh, well, my grandson's in trouble. And that's one of the things they'll do is these elderly people, they don't talk to their family. Their family don't really call them. They live alone. <clears throat> and so they think their grandson's in trouble. So they send this money over there. Well, this one lady, I we had told her, well, this is one of the scams. And I said, did you talk to your grandson? And she said, no, um, his friend called me. And I said, well, do you know his friend? She didn't know. She just said, and I said, you need to be very careful. There's a lot of scams going on. And she's like, oh, okay, thank you. And I go, do you still want to send the money? And she said, yeah, my grandson's in trouble. I said, well, when they call you back, when you go home, ask a personal question so she did well she came right back and she said that it was supposed to be her grandson and she told me well you don't it doesn't sound like you and then he's oh i'm sick right now and she said well answer this question and he didn't know how to do it so she hung up and she came back and luckily she was re able to you know get her money back we gave it right back to her we called money gram and fixed it but a lot of times sounds like there's a lot of that but we can't keep on with one call we got to keep moving thanks for the call here's andrew on the tom like show hello Hi, Tom. Hi. 
I thank you for the service that you provide to us. I am uh, all I gotta say is I am dumbfounded by the idiocracy of this woman. Uh, I I think I'm, I'm not gonna keep take up too much of your time. I think her her intentions were uh, somewhat selfish as opposed to what she claimed. Uh, she said she personally spoke to missionaries. She couldn't have directly given the funds there. I she wasted a whole fortune. I don't feel sorry for her. I feel sorry for her husband. Uh, thank you, Tom. Thank you. Here is, uh, let's see, we got so many here at 1-800-5800-TOM. Uh, we have time for one more here. Let's try to get uh, Travis in here on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay, Travis. Fantastic. Yeah, I just wanted to call in. Uh, that almost happened to me. I had uh, an email come through from a guy who claimed to be a uh, a lawyer to a late uncle of mine who was a, a civil engineer in Nigeria who uh, just deposited some $48 million in an account and, and just passed away. So uh, he needed my address, my name, my phone number, all that stuff. And uh, I said it to him. He got back to me and said he needed like $500 sent over. I said, no, I'm not sending you any money. And eventually he, he brought it down to 250 And then um, I, I, I walked into the place to send the money, and the guy told me it was a scam right there. I figured, you know what, it's only 250 bucks. But eventually, I, I ended up not sending it, and it's a good thing because I never heard from the guy again. Wow, wow, wow. Steven on the Tom Likas show for Janella Spears. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's up? Not much. Um, I wanted to point out how she said she's a pastor, but she's not a scammer. That That's kind of an oxymoron. I mean, God is great, and he helps everyone, but for some reason, he needs all of our money. What's that about? Well, money is the root of all evil, let's put it that way. And I personally have lived in the poorhouse for a long, long time. And I know how to scrape and scramble. And I know that God will provide. Now, uh, because of all of that, the, the situation of the loss of money hasn't bothered me more as much as it has my husband, who has not had to live in that particular type of situation where I've uh, been to the poorhouse. I started out with my entrepreneurship by selling potholders that my mother was making. And I had a little red wagon at uh, six years old. I went door to door trying to sell potholders so we could get food. Why out of time for this hour? The Tom Likas Show.